The first conference on the rope hypothesis started out like all new scientific movements, with a handful of inquiring individuals who get together in an attempt to understand. The members arrived on time and at the agreed-upon locations. But the evil forces of the quantum Gestapo were not about to let these revolutionaries have their say in peace. I'm sorry? Yeah, ich hätte gerne mal Ausweis gesehen. Passport. Now I'll be honest. I personally would not mind being arrested by this little lady. We touched on several topics, especially after the wine and beer bottles were empty. One of them was mass. The massive barbecue we had just made disappear. We have what is called a field. It's called a gravitational field. So far so good, we got a... What is this word? Well, this word is defined as a potential at each point in space. That's how we define it. If you have a ball, supposedly in three-dimensional space, right? We have each point, meaning each location, has a different potential which is a function of the distance to the center of, let's say, a planet. Uh, let's assume a perfect sphere. It could be the sun, right? So with respect to the center, we have, a, depending on the distance, we have a different potential. Correct? Now, what happens? We have a ball, and it's falling towards the Earth, or the sun, or whatever. And that's different than a ball that is static, stationary at a given distance from the center of the Earth. So we have two, two situations. One is a static scenario, the ball is just sitting there, we're holding it with our hands, we're God, we're just holding on to it. And we're saying, what is the potential? What's the number of ropes, independent ropes that pull on that ball, that atom, that object? Versus one, that same object, same exact object, coming already at a speed and is now so we have the snapshot at that location. The kinetic energy in it? Let's not get into that yet. I just, I, uh, because you're trying to give me a solution. I'm, not, I'm just no, trying no, to present no, the yeah, problem yeah, right I, now. I just ask a question. I'm just, let let yeah, me yeah, present yeah, the yeah, problem. Yeah, I want yeah. you to understand the problem first, okay? We're holding on to the ball, and according to the rope hypothesis, right, we have so many independent ropes at that, you know, uh, in a different angle with respect to that ball. And it's the same number of independent ropes at that location if the ball were speeding and now we take a snapshot at that location. There's no difference. It's got to be the same number of ropes pulling on the ball, whether it's stationary or it's already flying to that location. It's got to be the same number of, ball, uh, of ropes. So we have a problem because we have a dynamic concept and we have a static concept. It's not the same weight, it's not the same velocity for this thing to already have speed in built into it and for you to hold it in and let go of it. You understand the problem? Mm -hmm. So far so good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the question is, well, how do we explain this? Well, we have a static scenario, a photograph, and we have a dynamic scenario, a movie. But we're looking at one frame of that film in both cases. One where we just let go of it, and the other one where it's already coming to that location. They both have the same number of ropes. We have Mother Nature's eyes, we can see the ropes. Here's the same number of ropes, but one has a different velocity at that same location than the other one. What I'm saying here is, you know, uh, there's a difference between the dynamic context, which is relativistic mass, and the static concept, which, which is, you know, the inertial or uh, rest mass. Yeah. <laughs> you want the Higgs boson, right? The Higgs. The Higgs. Uh...
We got a Hicks here. Oh, wow, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm saying we got some clay too. Yeah. Okay, uh, it looks so great. here, you know, if you want to do this, you know, you can get a laser pointer right? and just point it at it. You know, yeah, it yeah, under see, this, I and then see, you're going to yeah, produce yeah, the yeah, fringes. You're going to produce the fringes as, as far as you want. You know, you just put the laser pointer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right? I've seen that. Before. So this I is a very beautiful. handy tool because I don't need slits. I don't need to go through all that nonsense. I just say here I have, here I have a needle. Here I have a laser pointer. You point it at it. You can produce the fringes. Mm -hmm. Now explain to me why those fringes come yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is why this destroys the wave and the particle. Because if the wave and particle hit this, it should bounce outwards, not inwards. Exactly. But with this, we can produce fringes bouncing inwards. Yeah, so how yeah. did we do it with yeah, the waves yeah, and particles? Yeah, 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 yeah. We can't do it. There's no way. What they tell you is, well, with waves, water waves, that's how they'll explain to you. They say, well, if I put this yeah, in water yeah, and shake yeah, the yeah, water, yeah, 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 we yeah. see that the water goes inward. Yeah, the water, yes. Is is light water? Is that what we're saying? Or we're talking about waves that go like this? Is that what light yeah, is? Yeah, they're comparing words. They're comp yeah, they're, they're saying we saw it with water. Yeah, that's, that's way not a good true. analogy. It's not yeah, a good analogy. No, no. Whatever. I'm saying if you're talking about particles, throwing particles, it's going to bounce outward. If you're talking about some wave that starts here, goes one way, it should hit and goes outwards also. How do you get it to bounce in? That's what I want. I want to know the magic. How do you do it with one-way mechanism? It must be a CIA operator. <laughs> this, you, 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 you understand uh, what I'm talking CIA. about here? Uh, Stella, you, you understand what I'm saying? I throw a chip. I throw the rock. Here, let's do it with a ball. Throw the ball. It hits the edge. It's got to bounce out. Yeah. If I have a wave, even if it's a one-way mechanism, the same thing. It should hit and bounce outwards. How do you get it to bounce inwards and inwards from here to produce the fringe? That's the only issue. You can't do it with one-way mechanism. You need something connected. With this, you can say the rope is connected to this, which is connected to the to every atom there. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Now I can get through that channel. I can get it to go anywhere there, I want. There, you now I can produce the you, fringes. You explained that there, uh, I can explain a road to How there. it turns the corner. Yeah. How do you explain light turning a corner? How did the Einstein explain that light goes around the sun? Well, you can do this with straight lines, like I said. You know, every atom in the corona of the sun is connected to your eye. Very simple, your camera, whatever you use to detect it. Then we can explain mm -hmm. it. But how do you do it? How did that star on the other side of the sun send a particle that goes around and comes to your eye? Now that's magic. Now that is magic. <laughs> how do you do this? Well, they had to curve the space around the sun. Well, it's following this curve and then it comes to your eye. So now we had to convert space into something in curve. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there is a fascinating. Get Luis to say something about shale. Shale, shale oil. Shale, shale oil is going to save us. Why, uh, Luis? Please tell us. Because it's uh, wealth that we pull from the ground. We pull it from the ground. So, uh, if we pulled it from the uh, sky, would it be any different? No, if you pull it from the sky, it's no different. But it has okay. to be a physical, you know, commodity. Okay, we pull a physical commodity. How's that going to save us? Uh, how's that going to extend the life of humans? Because it's something that people <laughs> be willing to exchange a currency or anything else of value for, which will spread exponentially around the planet and create jobs. Create jobs. And uh, by creating jobs, we have... Uh, more time. And, uh, more uh, growth, more right? More growth. More sales growth. And this will delay the extinction of man. No, this will delay collapse. Which means delay the extinction which, of man, which, I guess. Okay. Which could trigger the extinction mechanism we were talking about. Uh, best case scenario. Uh, let's assume that's true. Let's let's get, put it as a given. Uh, what are we talking about as far as time? What's your best guess? I know you're not an astrologer, but just your gut feeling here. My gut feeling is we're safe for the next five to ten years. Okay. Depending on the developments in shale and other factors around and unknowns that will have a handle on as things progress, who knows, maybe another hundred years. Okay. Just from this shell explosion. You know, and just enough for you to get your retirement exactly. money. Exactly. Okay, that's the important part. 
the, the limit of the resources is only by what we make up, what we need. No, it isn't. Uh, yeah, uh, you didn't listen to the man. Say that again. <laughs> it's only, uh, what the we limit need? is only how much we make up that we really need that stuff now. Right. Of course, we talked about everything. About 9-11 and the moon landings. About Julian Assange and JFK and his little brother Bobby. We talked till three in the morning one night because the discussion was so intense. Now, if you want to know the details of what we discussed, you'll just have to come to the conference next year.